All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Axel Erickson. I'm a co-founder at One Protocol. And we're a San Francisco-based startup building uh, virtual workers on Ethereum. And uh, today I'm going to talk about what that means, uh, why we're building them, and also uh, how we can create a great user experience for, for people that want to interact with them. So uh, the sort of very simple idea behind one protocol and virtual workers is that instead of signing up uh, machines directly as validators or, or miners in Casper or as solvers in Trubit or more generally as workers in protocols that require stake, we can actually sign up smart contracts as these workers. And in doing so, we can, one, solve some fundamental uh, efficiency problems inherent to uh, all protocols that, that choose to use staking. And two, we can actually create an entirely new uh, marketplace for earning returns uh, on, on capital. So um, before we go into exactly how that can work, I want to give you a quick sort of background uh, as to how we look at the space and, and why we're building this. So we think that a very useful model that we can use to think about protocols like Ethereum and like Trubit is that they're simply uh, marketplaces for some digital service. But they're very special marketplaces because they are open and anonymous. So what we mean by this is that anyone can plug in as the seller. Uh, think anyone can be a miner in Ethereum if they, if they run the mining software. And when the buyers want to buy some, some service, they never have to worry about who they actually get matched up with. Think that if I'm a user in Ethereum, I sign a transaction and I send it across the network, I never worry about which miner actually forms the block that contains my transaction. So uh, achieving these properties is usually quite tricky, but the, the short answer is that we use financial incentives. And, and there are a couple of strategies to, to, to how we can do that, but it turns out that using staking or requiring the miners or the workers to put up this big security deposit that they lose if they cheat is a very cheap way of doing so. So if you're interested in exactly what I mean about staking being cheap and, and how, we actually, uh, how we actually classify these things, I'd highly recommend you to watch our DevCon 3 speech, which, which is on YouTube, where we have like a 20-minute session where we go exactly into, into why this is the case. So, so anyway, because staking is this very cheap way of, of achieving correctness in these open and anonymous markets, our, our bet in this space is essentially that there's going to be all of these uh, protocols that can be modeled this way that are going to be using staking. And, and apparently, this has turned out to be true. So Ethereum is, of course, moving over to proof of stake eventually. Uh, we have Truebit, but also systems like Filecoin, Polkadot, and, and Livepeer all use staking for these exact reasons. So there's this sort of inherent problem with, with using staking, um, which is that we're effectively changing what a worker needs to do. Instead of just putting up a secure, uh, uh, instead of just supplying some useful service, they also need to put up the security deposit. So uh, from an economic perspective, we're sort of limiting the supply of viable workers. And this can create sort of a substantial inefficiency in the long run. So um, the way I like to think about it in more practical terms is, you know, which of the people that we would ideally want to run Casper validators uh, also happen to have $50 million in Ether uh, you know, under the bed? And, and the answer is not that many. So our solution to this problem are our virtual workers. <clears throat> and what we do there is that we let a smart contract sign up as the actual validator or, or the miner. And what the smart contract primarily does is that it allows one person to supply the tokens that are going to be used for staking. And it, uh, it allows some other entity to actually run the machine which, which runs the software. So in short, by, by dividing the labor you know, using a smart contract. We can, one, uh, solve this efficiency problem to some degree, and then secondly, we can also create this entirely new marketplace for capital. And if you think about it, what we've done is that we've created a system where if you have tokens but you don't want to run a miner, you can send your tokens to this virtual miner or this virtual worker and still earn interest on those tokens. And then similarly, if you have machinery but not necessarily that many tokens, you can, you can sort of earn returns from, from that type of capital. So that was the sort of what we're building and, and why we've taken that approach. Um, I just quickly, in the time that's remaining, also want to talk about sort of what, what the user experience may be like. So the sort of first insight is that if I'm a person that has a bunch of tokens and I want to participate in one of these virtual miners, there should be some place on Ethereum that I can go to, so some contract that I can go to and simply get matched up with the highest paying virtual worker in the moment. And similarly, if I have a machine, there, there should be a similar option. So this is exactly what one protocol allows. One protocol is our on-chain virtual worker marketplace. And the way that physically looks is, is very similar to something like a, like a matching engine. So 
just zooming in on what the experience may be for someone uh, who's supplying tokens. Uh, you know, we're building this uh, client-side, very simple website. Think, think something similar to my Ether wallet, where you can go. We can help you sign a transaction that sends your Ethers to one of these uh, virtual workers. There'll be a ticker so you can see your balance going up over time, um, and then a, a big withdraw button. We're also sort of exploring uh, some ways where we can actually tokenize your participation in one of these virtual workers. Uh, such that if you don't want to interact with our system, maybe you can go and sell that that uh, that, that token on an exchange and sort of exit that way. So uh, I don't have much time left, but sort of on our timeline, the two most common questions that we get asked are, you know, I like my Ether, I want more Ether, when can I start earning interest on my tokens? And the, the answer there is that our goal is to launch as soon as there exists some system that our virtual workers can target to earn, to earn interest, right? So this is as soon as, as, as Casper's out there or some other system. And then, you know, on, on, you know, when is the one protocol token sale? And, and the sort of insight there is that we're actually creating uh, this financial transaction that happens between the people that put up the tokens that are going to be used for staking and the people that put up uh, the machines. There's some payment that, that ultimately needs to happen between those, which means trivially we can ship a payment token uh, uh, for that interaction, but the answer to the question is that uh, we're not going to do that until we have, you know, the system is up and running and we, and we have users and it, and it makes sense from a fundraising perspective. So I'm out of time, so uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, we are hiring, so if it sounds interesting to, to build all these programs which, which make money and, and we call them virtual workers, then please reach out to us. Uh, we're at oneprotocol.com. My email is axel at oneprotocol.com. Thank you.